ESTG might be known to many as a rapper signed to Yo Gotti's CMG record label, but many didn't know his journey to the top wasn't as smooth as it appeared. As a matter of fact, he only began rapping after he failed to make it in his first chosen career, football. So how does the college football star beat all odds to become the rapper we all know today? I've got some answers in this video as I tell you all about the story of ESTG. But before we start the video, be sure to leave a like, and if you'd like to join this month's giveaway for one of these items on the screen, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, and then watch this video to the end to comment the hidden keyword. Good luck! While growing up, ESTG was mostly shielded from the street culture and lifestyle, even as he attended an all-boys Catholic school named St. Xavier High School. The school was then known to offer scholarships to help the low-income earners continue with their education. G had always been interested in sports as he happens to be an exceptional football player. While playing football as a freshman, ESTG met another young dude who was also a talented star, the dude named Jeremiah Neal, aka YLE Peso. The two quickly bonded together and Peso would take G under his wings as he mentored him. It is also noteworthy that YLE Peso was in a senior class while ESTG was a freshman. Both players were at the time regarded as two star players from the school and from there it could only get better as the relationship between them grew stronger. The relationship between the two young athletes however was what started a war in their city in Louisiana. ESTG has always had the ambition of getting a scholarship and worked really hard to get better at what he does. He trained extra hard and became really good which attracted a lot of teams to him. Most of them became interested in him before he chose to play for Sacramento City College. G was regarded as a star and started receiving offers from different teams such as Fresno State, New Mexico and Memphis, but he ended up playing for Stephen F. Austin University in Texas. It was here that he happens to play his best season, totaling over 100 tackles and had the possibility of being drafted to play in the National Football League. The sweet story was however cut short in the excitement short-lived as he was unlucky not to be drafted by any NFL team. ESTG reached the crossroad in his life as this would be the first time in his life that he would have to consider any other thing aside from football. He was only a broke student and also received the news that he had a baby on the way. G had made friends with lots of people during those years of moving between schools as well as those who were on the streets. In fact, most of those friends were now making good money and doing well for themselves. This soon changed ESTG's focus as he had only one thing in mind at this point which was to make cool money. He soon started working with some of his connects making deliveries from state to state and before you know it, the money started coming in. On one of such trips, ESTG was pulled over by the police and taken into custody after they found about 12 pounds of marijuana on him. With the arrest, he was facing a potential 10 years behind bars. Prior to his arrest, his family didn't have any idea he was involved in this kind of shit as they thought he was still focused on his football. But unknown to them, he was already making money from drugs and wasn't ready to go back to football. ESTG was soon out after he was bailed out by his old friend, YSG Peso, who was able to hire him a good lawyer and ESTG got only 5 months house arrest. Both old time friends soon reunited, YSG Peso also offered to mentor him but this time he wanted to be a rapper. G even later mentioned that he was inspired by Lil Baby while he was on house arrest and this was how he began his career as a rapper. What a transition from a sportsman to a rapper, ESTG and YSG Peso soon began attending studio sessions regularly together. They frequent the quality over quantity studio, but their bromance was not just music alone. It was much more deeper than that. The two friends were actually bringing the western end of the city and Newburgh together by doing things together. YSG Peso as well as rappers like H Block Duke repping the western end and while Newburgh had ESTG. The support from the two sides of the city also meant G's career started to gain ground and he was getting the buzz faster than expected. His numbers also started increasing as some of his earlier releases were already getting millions of views. The love between them soon changed and the relationship between the West End and Newburgh came crashing down quickly. So what changed the situation? In his words during an interview, ASTG had this to say. With my recent success, I don't know if that's what you want to call it, there's just a lot of stuff that came with it that I wasn't really ready for but I had to get ready for, you know what I'm saying? And that's just what's going on right now. It's a lot of people you know I'm saying who used to support, it ain't supporting me no more. It's a known fact that sometimes when artists blow up like that, there might be some people within their clique who might start getting jealous and envious of such artists. But was this the kind of situation ESTG was referring to or was it something more different? 
The incident that changed the course of the relationship between ESTG and his longtime friend, YSG Peso, was quite an avoidable one to be honest. It happened at the Quality Over Quantity studio on July 8, 2019. G and his crew as well as guys from the West End were all in the studio where everything seemed to be going on fine. In fact, it was like every other day, but while ESTG was in the studio both putting down a verse, an argument started between G's team and a dude from the West End. Things escalated pretty quickly and they took it outside the studio as a fight broke out. Just before one could say Jack, a gunshot was fired and a dude named Big O from the West Side was shot dead. The deceased was a well-respected member of his neighborhood, and although YSG Peso and ESTG initially brought everyone together, but for how long would the truce last? You guessed it right. Nothing soon mattered as a war was declared between the West Side and Numberg, ESTG and YSG Peso inclusive. Although they were longtime friends, they both had to choose between friendship or going against their hood. Not an easy option for the two parties, I must say. It's such an unfortunate incident and one wonders if the argument and confrontation between both crews had been quickly settled, then things might have turned out different. Some even felt maybe a genuine peace talk between the parties would have helped in preventing this whole thing, but at the end of the day, that never happened and here we are, talking about the whole situation. ESTG over the next couple of months dropped his first two mixtapes, El Toro and Die Bloody in June and August 2019, which was well received by fans. He soon started getting lots of attention and other established rappers who now wanted to work with him. Detroit rapper Sato Baby soon linked up with him for a song, Todd Different. ESTG flew down to Louisville to shoot the music video for the song and everything went on well during the shoot. However, as everyone was leaving the scene, a car reportedly pulled up and started firing shots, which hit ESTG five times. He was shot four times in the stomach and once in the left eye, which left him almost blind. His brother was also hit in the leg during the shooting. After extensive surgeries, ESTG survived and left the hospital after two weeks. He was soon back on the streets and in the studio. He's only one hell of a lucky boy. ESTG later rapped about the incident on his song, Nathaniel Forrest. He rapped blood in my eyes, feel it's my time. Rico speeding, trying to drive, talking loud. Looked in my eyes and told me, bitch, you better not die. Four in my side, one in my eye. Karma gon' come back around, out the car rear, walk him down, feds investigating us now. Look what we did for the city, this how they repay us, niggas is faithful to sucker shit like they get checks for hatin'. I was the one they ain't expected, I feel like Calvin Cambridge, I feel like Mike. I started dead situations back up like I'm jumper cables. A deep look at the lyrics showed the pain and agony behind those words. ESTG was soon bereaved after the shooting incident as his mom passed on due to leukemia. His brother also soon died as he was shot dead. It is, however, not clear if his brother's death had anything to do with the ongoing war. Who knows? His career was on the rise by this time, but so was the war in Louisville. In fact, everything got crazy after the shooting incident. On August 14, 2020, an upcoming rapper from the West End named The Real Low B, real name Brandon Waddles, was driving in his car with his three-year-old daughter. In the West End neighborhood of Jacobs when Kevon Lawless from the EST side allegedly pulled up and fired several shots. Brandon and his daughter were hit several times and they were both confirmed dead on the scene. It's one thing to take your offense on a grown-up, but why bring the kid into this? So that incident caused outrage within the city as people really wanted the authorities to catch the killer soon. Kevon Lawless accepted the charge after he was arrested, but no one at this time knew he had ties with the rapper ESTG. When Kivon was then bonded out for $300,000 by an A&R at Alamo Records named Nigel Talley, the move drew suspicion and condemnation from people and they soon started connecting the links. What then is the relationship between the arrested killer and the music executive? You want to guess? It was found out that Nigel Talley used to be a producer for ESTG. It was at this point that the Louisville police also started looking deeper into the war between ESTG and YSG Peso. As the police were still trying to piece things together, the West End wasted no time in getting revenge for their homie, Brennan, who was shot dead by Kevon Lawless. On October 2, 2020, one of ESTG's closest pals, Austin Floyd, was visiting the West End area when he was also gunned down. The killing reportedly hit ESTG so hard as Floyd was his right-hand man and had appeared in many of his music videos. Just a few weeks later, on October 23, 2020, another dude from the West End was driving on a Highland Road where he was shot and killed. The two sides by now were trading bodies for bodies and more was expected if the situation wasn't quickly brought under control. 
Both sides also soon started forming alliances with other neighborhoods and expanding the war between them. The war that started from a petty fight in the studio has however turned friends and brothers into enemies. ESTG was only becoming more and more recognized as a rapper and his career was skyrocketing. He was even soon signed on by Yo Gotti to the CMG label and he soon had the chance to collaborate with popular mainstream rappers like Lil Baby and 42 Doug, even Lil Dirt. His music was popping now but it was almost impossible for him to celebrate his wins back home in Louisiana. ESTG not only caught the attention of fans though, the Louisville task force had been watching out and monitoring his crew for almost a year. Their investigation really picked up after Kevon Lawless was bailed out by Nigel Talley and everything started to add up for them. ESTG had also used lyrics in a song where he said, Free Kevon Lawless, which the police used as evidence. The police soon arrested 10 members of EST's crew, even though he hasn't been identified to be directly involved. They're being charged with conspiracy to possess with the intent to distribute and distribution of controlled substances, with several of them facing additional firearms and drugs charges. All of the crew members linked some of the drugs involved, including heroin, methamphetamine, fentanyl, and cocaine, with agents confiscating a kilogram of cocaine, guns, a stolen car, and $160,000 in cash with search warrants. ESTG's manager, Eric Mosley, is also facing a minimum of 10 and 15 years and a maximum sentence of life in prison if found guilty. Mosley had been taken into custody on September 9th after the FBI served a warrant at a Louisville hotel. Finding him with $100,000 cash, a kilogram of cocaine, and an AK-47 style pistol, and a stolen hangar. Even though ESTG is now signed to Yo Gotti's CMG label, which would give him more avenues to roll with the bigger stars, which would definitely help his career. He however has to walk that journey without 10 members of his crew. We also hope he isn't linked to the crimes in one way or the other in the nearest future, as this would mean the young athlete who couldn't blow as a football star blew his stardom chance anyways. And that would be disheartening. Alright guys, that's all I've got for you in this video. Let me know what you think about the story in the comment section. Hey you, yeah you, you like the video? Great, we've got another one for you that we guarantee you'll like, and all you have to do is click on the screen. It's free and without any hidden fees, but you have to click on it fast because this message is self-destructing 5 seconds.